The opening weekend to the UFL, it definitely had its ups and downs. I think we saw plenty of teams just trying to break the rust off and trying to figure out the fluidity of their systems. I mean, some of the teams came right out of the gate looking absolutely fantastic, while others were just a little bit sluggish. So let's just go ahead and get right into this one. The game to kick off the UFL season was between the two reigning champions of their respective leagues, the Arlington Renegades versus the Birmingham Stallions. And this game, it, it was a roller coaster to say the least, at least in the first first half each team's first possession ended in a turnover and then each team's second possession ended in a field goal then the renegades scored the first touchdown of the day in the second quarter and that would be the last touchdown for the renegades all game long after that the stallions pretty much just took over the game and it was just off to the races from there the stallions offense looked good on the ground and through the air the stallions opted with a two quarterback offense which is crazy but what's even crazier is that it worked matt corral was the postman leading the airmail part of the offense while martinez took on the role of the michael vick with no dog fighting, at least not yet. Martinez had 52 yards on three attempts, which with him and CJ Maribel lining up in the backfield, I mean, honestly, it was hard to tell which one of them was gonna take off and go with it. CJ finished with 67 yards and a touchdown. I wish I had more to say about the Renegades, but to be honest, they just didn't play good ball in the second half at all. And I expected more from you, Luis Perez. My personal favorite game of the weekend was the second game, and it ended in record-setting fashion. The Battle Hawks came in as heavy favorites. I mean, Vegas favored them with minus seven, okay? Like, it wasn't even supposed to be close. And to be honest, you could have turned the game on in the fourth quarter, just watch the entire game then, because that's whenever both teams actually looked like that they were playing good football. EJ Perry just looked awful. He could not complete a pass to his teammates to save his life. He went 12 of 24 with two interceptions and a QBR of 39.6. But hey, at least Wes Hills did all the work running, rushing for 85 yards so Perry could run in his pair of touchdowns in the red zone and steal all the thunder. AJ McCarry in the Hawks was trying his hardest to will his team to victory by throwing dimes all across the field. I mean, with Marcel Aitman showing up big for his team in the final stretch of the game by making this insane fourth down grabs. Marcel Aitman, give me that! You would have thought that this team was gonna win the game. The biggest story of this game happened in the final moments of the game. I mean, just watch. 64 yard try for the lead. Good snap. Good hold, line drive, kick, and it is good! Oh, and people are just like, oh, but Ford Field is just so nice to kickers. Uh, Justin Tucker hit his 66 yarder there. Dude, he did it twice, back to back, and didn't even need to hit the crossbar to get it through. And there was still plenty of leg behind it, like just stop. Hold on, baby. Hold on. Oh, the coach got to hear about this. The third game of the weekend was honestly, dude, it was just the biggest surprise of the weekend. I mean, everyone and their mom expected DC to go out there and just absolutely wipe the floor with the Brahmas. I mean, unless you're one of the 12 Brahmas fans that exists. Even Vegas had the favorite with minus four and a half. So it's not just me saying this. And honestly, the Brahmas looked really good. Wade Phillips came in and turned that into an actual ball club now, boy. Biggest story going into this game was the internet sensation Destroy making his professional debut since being kicked off off the UCF team. But what if I told you it was a different special teams player on the Brahmas who came in and stole the show. Brad Wing absolutely drops it into the bucket to his center Alex Molette for a big man touchdown. Even the big one needs some love, baby. Uh The Brahma's office looked good too, with Chase Garbers going out there and making the defenders look like Garbo. He finished with 153 yards, two touchdowns, and the highest QBR on opening weekend. The former Steeler McFarland was having a day with 47 yards on the ground and an additional 28 yards and a tutty in the air. I cannot fail to mention Jonte Kirkland because this guy was absolutely electric. Every time he touched the ball, you thought this guy could score. He had 61 yards on eight receptions and a touchdown 
Jordan Tayamu finished with 235 yards, but he did that on 45 pass attempts. Look, I, I understand with Abram Smith going down that you're going to have to pass the ball more, but you got to get this guy some help. You can't you can't sustain a, a good offense with your quarterback throwing 45 times. It's the UFL. It's not even the NFL. The shining star on this team is Ty Scott, and he finished with 87 yards receiving. The defenders who don't defend. God, it's almost like I made a video about this. The beer snakes deserve better. Greg Williams, where you at, bud? The final game of the weekend ended about how we all expected it to, okay? With, with Chef Cook is going out there and absolutely slicing and dicing up that defense. And he spread the ball out so much that six different receivers didn't see less than four targets. Jonathan Adams really looked like the man amongst boys out there. And even this whole team was out there making NFL-esque catches. And yes, I mean that. Vinny Papale had a San Antonio Holmes toe tap in the back of the end zone. And what they're lacking in rushing, the chef makes up for in the air. But to be honest, the story of this team was their defense. Greg Reeves was still looking dominant with three tackles and two sacks. And their defense even scored a touchdown as well. There's no nice way to say this, but that Houston offense was a little rough to watch. Stick with me here. But Guarantano on paper, I mean, he looked decent, right? Uh, he was pretty pretty clean with the football besides that one fumble that he had but I don't even think that's right to blame him because this offensive line was so bad like I'm talking Chicago Bears level bad and they only had 43 yards rushing with Guarantano being the leading rusher on the team although the Houston Roughnecks lost their first game there is a silver lining here this defense looked pretty good they held this star-studded offense to only 18 points and both Greg Reeves and Ruben Foster both had huge days and finally, with this week's winners and losers, the winner, or here in a second, is Jake not only saving EJ Perry's job by hitting a 64-yarder to win the game for the Panthers, but it's the fact that he brought the spark back into the special teams. And if it wasn't him, then it was the San Antonio Brahmas having that big man touchdown, or it could have been the DC Defenders returner having over 150 yards. And the losers of this week are the DC offenders, because I am so offended that the defense it's just so bad. Not only was the play of the year a big man TD on you guys, but it was the fact that the Brahmas were able to dismantle you in every single facet. The biggest surprise of the weekend were the San Antonio Brahmas. I mean, they went out there and absolutely shocked what was supposed to be one of the best teams in the UFL. And you guys did it decisively too. That's the crazy thing. And I know it's only week one, but you guys look like one of the most fluid offenses in the league. And I have to just give credit where credit is due. Vamos, Brahmas! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. And if you liked it, please subscribe or, you know, even check out my other videos and let me know what you think. Also, if you are a fan of sports history, then you should come check out my YouTube shorts or my TikTok where I post daily. Hey guys, welcome